24th of September 2024 to review recent economic and financial developments as well as assess risks to the outlook. 11 of the 12 members of the committee were in attendance. Decisions of the MPC. The committee was unanimous in its decision to further tighten policy and thus decided as follows. One, raise the MPR by 50 basis points to 27.25% from 26.75%. Two, retain the asymmetric corridor around the MPR at plus 500 to minus 100 basis points. Three, raise the cash reserve ratio of deposit money banks by 500 basis points to 50% from 45% and merchant banks by 200 basis points to 16% from 14%. Four, retain the liquidity ratio at 30%. Considerations. The committee noted the moderation in headline inflation year on year in July and August 2024. In addition, the MPC noted the relative stability and convergence in the exchange rate across the various market segments, resulting from the bank's tight monetary policy stance. This is expected to improve confidence, which will enable economic agents to plan in the medium to long term. The committee was, however, unanimous in recognizing that a lot more is required to actualize the bank's price stability mandate. The MPC noted that even though headline inflation trended downwards due to a moderation in food inflation, core inflation has remained elevated, driven primarily by rising energy prices. The uptrend poses severe concerns to members as it clearly indicates the persistence of inflationary pressures. Members thus reiterated the need to work in close collaboration with the fiscal authority to address the current upward pressure on energy prices. The MPC noted the continued growth in money supply, recognizing the need to curtail excess liquidity in the system as well as address foreign exchange demand pressures. Members were also concerned about the growing level of fiscal deficit, but acknowledged the commitment of the fiscal authority not to resort to monetary financing through ways and means. Furthermore, members observed a strong correlation between FAC releases and liquidity levels in the banking system, as well as its impact on the exchange rate. The committee, therefore, agreed to increase monitoring 
of future releases with a view to addressing its effect on price developments. On food inflation, the upside risks remained flooding, hike in energy prices, scarcity of PMS, and most importantly, security in farming communities. Considering the weight of food in the CPI basket, members recognize the efforts of the federal government in addressing insecurity in the farming communities and stress the need to remain steadfast. In addition, the MPC applauded the ongoing efforts of the federal government of Nigeria to bridge the supply deficit through duty-free import window for food commodities. The committee expressed optimism at the lifting of refined petroleum products from Dangote refinery will moderate transportation costs and significantly support the easing of food price pressures in the short to medium term. This is also expected to moderate foreign exchange demand for importation of refined petroleum products with a positive spillover on external reserve and improvement in the overall balance of payment position. Members assess the performance of key financial soundness indicators and noted with satisfaction that despite familiar headwinds, the banking industry remains safe, sound, and stable. The committee, however, emphasized the need to sustain supervisory oversight on the industry to strengthen its continued support to the economy. Following these considerations, members deliberated on the optimal policy option to sustain the downward in price development, contain emergent risks to inflation, stabilize the exchange rate, and safeguard the banking system, while also shielding the recovery of output growth. In addition, members noted that the real policy rate remains negative, even after the recent moderation in headline inflation. To attract investments into the economy, efforts must be sustained to achieve a positive real interest rate. This would enhance the economy's competitiveness for international capital, thereby improving the exchange rate. Following a review of the upside risks to price development and the downward risk to the recovery of output growth, the committee opted to tighten policy further to safeguard the gains already accrued in moderating inflationary pressures. <clears throat> Key developments in the domestic and global economies. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, headline inflation moderated to 32.15% in August 2024 from 33.4% in July, driven by a decline in food inflation, while the core component inched up. Food inflation eased to 37.52% in August 2024 compared with 39.53% in July, while core inflation rose marginally to 
27.58% in August 2024 compared with 27.47% in July. Month-on-month -month headline inflation fell to 2.22% in August 2024 from 2.28% 2 in the preceding month, while food inflation eased to 2.3% in August 2024 compared with 2.47% in July. Core inflation, however, rose marginally to 2.27% in August 2024 compared with 2.16% in July. 2.16% in July. Real GDP year on year grew by 3.19% in the second quarter of 2024 compared with 2.98% in the first quarter, driven by both the oil and non-oil sectors. Staff forecasts indicate that the economy will grow by 3.32% in 2024. The external reserves stood at 39.07 billion as at 19 September 2024, an increase of 17.4% compared with $33.28 billion in the corresponding period of 2023. This represents eight months of import cover for goods and services and 13 months of import of goods only. Global growth projection by the IMF remains at 3.2% in 2024 and 3.3% in 2025. Some of the downside risks to this projection remain geoeconomic fragmentation, elevated global debt, and ongoing geopolitical tensions between Russia and Ukraine, as well as Israel and neighboring countries. As key central banks commence monetary easing, global financial conditions are expected to ease gradually and hopefully offset the downside risk to the recovery of global growth. Global inflation is expected to continue its deceleration in 2024, but may remain above the long-run targets of most central banks in the advanced economies. Members thus express their commitment to continuous monitoring of developments in the global and domestic economies to ensure that the appropriate response is always deployed to address emerging risks. The next meeting of the committee will be held on the 25th and 26th of November 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Governor, sir. That was communique number 154, presented by the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and the chairman of the MPC, Mr. Ulayemi Kadusu. We will now take questions from the members of the press. Please state your name, your medium, and ask your question. You are entitled to a question. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Governor. Good afternoon on everyone. Uh, my name is Musa Abukar with NTA. Okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Governor. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Musa Abubakar with the NTA. Uh, my question is, uh, 
uh, the recent inflation numbers released by the uh, uh, National Bureau of Statistics uh, show a reduction in headline inflation yeah, year on year, dropping to 32.15%, uh, uh, representing a 1.25% uh, decline. However, core inflation rose to 27.58% uh, uh, in the same period. What is your reaction to uh, this mixed inflationary uh, trend? Thank you very much, Musa. Um, let, let me first and foremost say that um, as central bank, and this is something I've said before and I will not tire to say it, that we are resolute in our, in our focus on bringing down inflation. And we would use all the tools in our disposal to ensure that that happens. We are not going to spare any effort in doing that. The numbers clearly show that we are heading in the right direction. Okay, it's you know, the fact that we are seeing the reductions and the deceleration over the course of the last couple of months is very, very good news. However, we are not out of the woods yet. We are not out of the woods yet. And we really cannot take any chances. You mentioned the issue of, of core inflation, okay, which excludes food. And really and truly, we have you know, um, been able to have an ongoing dialogue with other stakeholders over a period of time to ensure that the food component um, moderates. And we hope that will continue to be the case. But it is also clear that there are other factors that um, impinge on both, on both prices and aggregate demand that need to be focused on. And indeed, we intend on doing exactly that. And that is the reason why we have taken the, the stance that we have taken to tighten and continue to do so until we, we bring this under control. And, and let me um, conclude by saying that as far as I know, there is no economic model that portends to take um, um, people out of poverty when inflation is accelerating at the levels that we've seen it at. There's none. And for that reason, we do not intend to relent on ensuring that we bring it under control. Good afternoon, Mr. Governor and members of the MPC. Um, Governor, my question would uh, be around... You say you should introduce Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm Nancy. <laughs> I'm Nancy, the executive producer and anchor of Moneyline with Nancy on AIT. Okay, um, this MPC meeting coincides with your one-year anniversary uh, for you and your team, either when the president announced it or when you all were confirmed by the Senate. So uh, either way, it's one year. So I suppose that perhaps during this MPC meeting, you and your team also reflected in the last one year about the effectiveness of your policy prescriptions around inflation targeting and the monetary policy conduct under your administration. I remember that when you came in, inflation was lower than where we are now. Uh, you just raised um, NPR with you and your team by another 50 basis points. So we're having an 8.5% increase since you and your team uh, came in. Your inflation targeting uh, target, let me put it that way, is 21.4% by year end. This is three months to December. We are 32.19%. Uh, so I would like to know how is your assessment around policy prescriptions around monetary policy conduct under your watch, if it's actually working, and um, F FX uh, rates management, as exchange rates management, liquidity management, and the general growth of the economy. Because Nigerians are really suffering, Governor. They are suffering. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Nancy, maybe I shouldn't have asked you to introduce yourself. <laughs> um, good triple-barreled question. I won't even call it double, triple. And to respond to this, I think it is important, and you all as members of the press 
And I'm happy that Nancy rightly said um, there was a period before we entered office, and we've entered office and now there's a one year. And of course, it's a continuum and so it will be. It's important, like you said, in reflecting back to also remember where we are coming from. Okay, and I want to perhaps give a little bit of context on that before I uh, and touch on the issues, on the questions you raised. But I think it's so important to understand that. You can't divorce a situation that had taken place over a number of years with the past one year. Now, first and foremost, we came into a very loose money supply situation. Between 2015 and 2023, the past eight years, witnessed an incredible amount of pumping of liquidity into the system. Um, in 2015, money supply was about 19 trillion naira. And in 2023, it was 54 trillion naira. I mean, that's a huge increase, a very, very huge increase. And a substantial amount of that, as I'm sure you all know, was through ways and means. Okay, so essentially printing of money resulted in a huge amount of money chasing, because this is the implication, chasing the same amount of goods, a relatively small amount of goods. So I think that context is very, very, very important to have. And to put it in another way, while the economy on average was growing at 1.2% during that time, money supply was growing at 12.6%. Okay, so you can see the inherent distortion there. Then also, let's not forget that we had a situation where global oil prices uh, collapsed okay, in 2015. Okay. And with that collapse also, we shouldn't forget, unfortunately, and it's just a, a fact of life, that Nigeria is a monolithic economy. Okay. So you're dependent for everything on oil. And as a result of the collapse in oil prices, foreign exchange began to dwindle, and it's important to understand that, that, the, the, with, uh, that within this period, the response to that was really lesser foreign exchange and fixing of foreign exchange prices. And that also harmed the economy to no end. In other words, you had a situation where the response to excess money supply, little foreign exchange available, was to fix exchange rates, okay? Which now resulted in multiple exchange rates and arbitrage opportunities between one and the other, okay? And of course, this in itself resulted in a backlog of foreign exchange, because this is where all these things have come from. And sometimes people forget that this is the context in which we came into the saddle of the central bank, okay? So, it's just what it is. Um, real sector at the time were obviously unable to access foreign exchange and you know, things really got difficult and inflation continued to spike. So in that situation, we came into the saddle. And of course, a number of things happened. One of which, of course, is with the background I've given you, um, attempt to um, harmonize the multiple exchange rates, and I believe that that clearly has, has brought about the results it has, including the fact that you, do no, you no longer have these multiple windows, and including the fact that um, exchange rate is a lot more flexible and people are more able to transact their businesses okay, through um, willing buyer, willing seller, as opposed to a situation where uh, multiple exchange rates um, discourages or does not enable that to happen. So clearly, 
that has helped in no small way. And of course, the moderation, the, the multiple hike in exchange rates, I beg your pardon, the multiple hike in interest rates have also helped to moderate the inflation that I spoke about earlier, have helped to moderate the inflation. Don't forget that here was a situation where um, exchange rate was really running at an incredible pace. And people had lost confidence in the or were beginning to lose confidence in the currency. So we believe that these multiple um, hikes have helped for people to now begin to take a different look at their currency. And there's a greater incentive to hold Naira as opposed to a situation that we, held, we had before where this was not the case. Of course, we've ensured that the market operates in a more flexible manner because you see, in all this, the encouragement for people to transact in our market has got to be when the confidence has been built up. And we believe that that's what we have been able to do through clearing the backlog of seven billion that I mentioned to you earlier and, and being a lot more transparent in operations, which by the way includes what we are doing here. The fact that we are having this discussion, the fact that we are opening up the various things that we are doing gives confidence that there is greater transparency in the way and manner in which we are carrying out our business. And indeed, that is the case because we feel that that is so important in supporting the various um, policies that we have um, taken, undertaken. Tough though they may be, and yes indeed, I accept that they, they may be tough. They really may be tough. But I've taken pains to give you this background to understand that we have no choice but to deploy these tools to ensure that we can rein in the excess liquidity that has been in the system, the high inflation that has resulted to, from all the excess liquidity, and indeed to encourage um, portfolio investors, those who are outside and had taken flight, quite frankly, to come back into the economy and to start taking an interest in Nigeria. Good afternoon, Mr. Governor and other members of the MPC. My name is Lionel Zukwe, uh, Head of Business and Finance Desk, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. Uh, just a rider to Nancy's question in a way. Mr. Governor, you are one year in office as a governor. Uh, could you, in all this I have said, tell us the most significant, the most outstanding achievement of the Apex Bank in starting the economy in the past uh, one year. Uh, share your perspective with us on how you intend to sustain what you think is the most achievement I have done within one year. Thank you. Thank you very much, Linus. Um, you know, in the business of, of banking and in the business of central banking in particular, one thing that is so important and I must make this um, distinction between what we do and what those that perhaps um, deal in goods, in tangible goods, as opposed to money. I mean, the principle is the same, but it's a lot more when you're dealing with money. Is that of trust? Is that of trust? Okay. And we appreciate that as is a business of trust. And I appreciate that as the governor of the central bank, I am in a position of trust. I appreciate that. And we have done a great deal in restoring credibility back to the central bank and regaining the trust in the institution. We are not there yet. 
it is a continuum. But without the success of rebuilding the trust, all the other things that we want to credit ourselves with having done or wanting to do will not happen. And that is part of the reason I mentioned earlier on. And I was asked this at a particular forum I went to. Why did you prioritize paying back the backlog? Why? Why did you do that? Why couldn't you have, 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 have um, sort of found a way to stretch it out over a period of time? And, 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 not? and the answer to that, quite frankly, is that it's part of the building of trust process. People have to trust you. They have to know that irrespective of what has happened, there's somebody in the saddle who is looking at things in a very, very dispassionate manner and will come to the conclusions that are in the best interest of all. That is very, very important. And that is another thing that I will talk about, which is in the process of doing all these things we've done, we decided it was important to refocus the mandate of the central bank to orthodoxy, to orthodoxy. We are fully engaged in getting ourselves out of unorthodox means of running the central bank. And I've spoken about this on several occasions. It is all part of focusing on a core mandate which essentially will moderate prices as we have begun to see the results and will eventually result in price discovery on the foreign exchange side. These are all linked in together. You cannot take one without the other. And I must say that a year later, I'm very pleased to note that the rating agencies, for example, have, seen, have, have given us a more positive rating than when we came in. And that in itself, as far as I can see, speaks volumes. Because again, the rating agencies are not one given to emotion. They come in, they look at your books, they look at your numbers, they ask you the right questions, they see your projections, and based on that, they rate you accordingly. And we so far have been positively rated. So that, because I can sit down here talking for the next hour of the great and wonderful things that I believe I have done. I believe, again, we are not there yet. And, and, and I accept the fact that many outside are finding things very difficult. They are finding it very difficult. But I want to say that the things we are doing are set to, to, to put the economy of this country in a trajectory where we shouldn't go back and see some of the the, the, the inefficiencies we've seen in our system over the recent past. So these, I believe, are short-term pains, and eventually we will get out of, of the situation we are in now. We have also been very, very, very careful with respect to transparency around our operations. And for, for those of you who don't know, when we did the last foreign exchange intervention with ADAS. That was one of the reasons we used that, because we felt it was important at that time to send a very positive, transparent signal out for everybody to know exactly what is going on and how foreign exchange resources were being expended. Governor, sir, my name is Ima Uja. I work for Vanguard. Um, the report we have of uh, remittances in July was that uh, it was the highest so far of $500 million. And um, ob observers are, are waiting to see how this will translate to better performance of the Naira uh, against uh, major currencies at the FX. Uh, but we have not seen that exactly yet. Could you uh, speak to that? Yeah. Thank you very much, Ima. Um, let me 
uh, first, as at August, that figure, from what I'm told, is $585 million as at August. It's $558 million, $585 million US dollars. Now, that is a big deal. And it's over 130% for the corresponding period last year. That's a big deal. Okay, and I want to just say to you, Ima, that this didn't drop from the ceiling. It didn't. It was a deliberate, calculated effort. We recognized in the central bank that certain things were not happening, and I will talk about that you know, subsequently because you asked about the, the value of the exchange rate, and that there was a need for central bank itself to see what it could do with respect to encouraging inflows into the system. And IMTOs was one of those sectors where we liberalized, we liberalized and encouraged the operators in that sector to open accounts. And we are normally dealing with them on a regular basis to ensure that that number begins to go up. Because we were at a loss when everybody we will, we go to international fora and people will talk about how uh, the diasporans are all out there. They want to do all kinds of things in the economy. And why is it that we are not able to get that as a source of inflow for our economy? Um, and that we started that process of engagement. And I'm happy to say that it has paid off. I'm very happy to say it has paid off. Having said that, we're not going to rest on our laurels. We're going to continue. And they will have some very innovative um, um, products and ways of engaging that sector. That, and we are pretty confident that if we continue in that trajectory, that figure will begin, will continue to, to go up. I had made a commitment, um, and I think this was probably in March earlier this year. And I said at the time, when I decided to engage this, that within a year, I would double that figure. I said I would double it. We set up a committee, I head it, and I drive it personally. I am personally invested in that, and I am personally driving it. And I know that we will get the results that we need. Now, you said, OK, all well and good. This is happening, but it hasn't, uh, or you say, since you are in the press, you do hear the thinking of people that it has not um, rubbed up positively on the exchange rate. I think that is your worry. I, I, I must tell you that in as much as the strategy of the central bank is to unlock as many diversified sources as possible into the foreign exchange area, it is our, it is our strategy. But it is not enough. And it never, it can never take the place of fundamentals. It can never. We may like to think it can. We may like to dream it can, but it can't. Until the fundamentals are fixed and in place, you will continue to suboptimize. Oil production has got to be ramped up to the level that will carry the economy. And I think we are all ongoing witnesses to efforts that are being made in that sector. It has to happen. Non-oil exports, and I spoke about the sad situation that we as Nigerians face today, whereby we are a monolithic economy. As long as we are a monolithic economy, the, 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 the constraints to having the strong exchange rate that we also desire will continue to be hampered. We need to diversify our economy. We need to. There's so much that a central bank can do 
without the fundamentals in the right position, we will continue to suboptimize. Again, as Nigerians, we must look for ways for import substitution. It cannot all be about import, import, import. And our taste for foreign goods, also, we must be able to calibrate them accordingly. So these are all things that essentially will determine where we settle with respect to our foreign exchange rates. And as I said, we may want to wish it away, but it's not going to go anywhere. The central bank is determined to play its part in ensuring that the markets operate efficiently and those who gain the market, if we get them, they pay the price. But that will not substitute for fundamentals. It's not going to. It will help along the way. It will make the road of travel easier, but ultimately it's the fundamentals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Governor, sir. I received some questions from um, some members of the press who are now here with us. Permit me, Mr. Governor, sir, to ask the questions on their behalf. I have a question from Mr. Tony Chukwiam of, of New Telegraph. He said, Mr. Governor, sir, recent data from the CBN indicates that currency in circulation, CIC, has hit the four trillion mark. However, there are many reported cases of cash shortages in banks across the country. What is the true situation and what is the CBN doing to checkmate this? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Tony, New Telegraph. Um, Good question, very good question indeed. Money supply, cash, you're right, and those um, statistics that you have quoted are accurate, as far as I know, they are accurate. Um, over four trillion in July. Um, and I know from my internal sources that another 1.4 trillion is likely to be um, delivered in another three months to aid that whole process of cash uh, within the system and cash um, velocity. We are, so from our perspective, I think we are doing everything possible to, to ensure that there's sufficient cash in the system. That's that side of thing. But there's no um, excuse for not having sufficient cash in the system. Now it goes to the deployment of that cash. It goes to the deployment of that cash. And quite frankly, we are working very, very closely. We're engaging with all the deposit money banks um, to ensure that they are putting these things through their ATMs, effectively dispensing cash to those that are in need. And whether they are in need or not, that's the function of the deposit money banks, that at all points in time, there should be sufficient cash in their system that nobody should go there without being able to withdraw. We are, ourselves have got in place a monitoring system. We have devised a monitoring system, a spot checking system, whereby we will go to the banks and just ensure that these things are done in a way and manner in which they are meant to be done. And if they are not, again, there will be sanctions. But I believe that the stage we are in now, everybody realizes that the various stakeholders must play their part in ensuring that cash gets to the desired places that we intend them to be. Thank you so much, sir. I have another question that just came in from Mr. Kende Ibrahim of National Pilot. He said, Mr. Governor, sir, given the relationship 
between the pump price of petroleum products and the inflation in Nigeria vis-à-vis -vis the long-awaited commencement of the supply of petroleum products to the NNPCL by the Dangote refinery? What will be the monetary policy response to the issue of pricing and foreign exchange management? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kendi. Um, let, let me say in no uncertain terms that, from my perspective, the Dangote refinery um, portends good things for the Nigerian economy. It portends good things for the Nigerian economy. Um, right now, um, imported products uh, contribute between 10 and 15 percent of our imports. And to the extent that we are able to do away with that, I think that is, that's a very, very, very good thing. It's a very positive thing. So I'm, I, I, I think there's cause for us to look with optimism that 10 to 15 percent of what the pressure that we are getting will, um, will abate over a period of time. And of course, um, additionally, as production ramps up and we get <coughs> to 2 million barrels and over and, you know, the export side begins to kick in and foreign exchange starts to come in, that also uh, will, will further support the Naira and, of course, our efforts at managing the foreign exchange rate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Governor, sir. That brings to end this press briefing. Thank you all for coming and see you in November. Thank you.